Just the term loose woman. I mean, the amount of taxis I've been in where they're going, oh, I love you, a loose woman. Uh, yep, I'm one of those, so to speak. It's great fun. Um, we have so much fun. And especially being part of the first all black panel was, you know, we it was a historical moment. At the end of the show, we were all in floods of tears because it meant so much to each and every one of us to be part of it. And, you know, obviously winning the award and the RTS on top of all of that for our episode just was like the cherry on the cake. Um, there were 14 top 15 hits, so I could be here a long time, but if I was to pick, forced to pick one, it'd probably be want to be the only one. Firstly, because it was our first number one record and getting to work with BB Winans was amazing. It was like a dream come true. He's somebody that I'd listened to as a child, so to actually get to perform with him was, yeah, it was amazing. And his vocal, just every time he comes in on his verse, you're just like, oh, yes. The transition from music to television was a tricky one because people kind of want to pigeonhole you. They want to go, oh, she's a singer. And actually what people didn't know is that I was a an actor before I was a singer. So I was in things like the Bill and EastEnders before I even got into the band. And it really wasn't until Hollyoaks, I think, that it was, you know, kind of, um, the turning point for me where people were, you know, seeing me. Because I was doing lots of theatre, but like on that level where people were going, oh, actually, she's not a bad actress. <laughs> I joined Hollyoaks um, because I found Brian Kirkwood inspirational. He talked to me about the kind of storylines that he wanted to tackle um, on Hollyoaks, um, including Unconscious Bias, and obviously the episode that was dealing with, um, which, which sounds so, when I say it, it sounds like, oh, we should so be okay with this by now. But I was actually, um, we dealt, dealt with a storyline where we were dealing with uh, gay people within the Afro-Caribbean community, predominantly in the, in the Christian community, and how difficult it is to come out. So dealing with those types of things were, were challenging storylines that I, were really passionate to me. And that kind of was crystallised for me in the Unconscious Bias episode. I got to be very integral in terms of the writing and the storyline and the writer, um, Carla Marie Sweet, uh, she did delivered an epic piece that, that dealt with, you know, the smallest things, the, the, the nuances of everyday life of a black person, things like, you know, a plaster on your finger, which is so powerful. The amount of people that have said to me, they didn't even think about that as a concept of having a plaster which is supposed to match your skin tone, but they are all pink. I think to change uh, representation, it has to start from the top down. If we still look around the boardrooms in most corporations, those people will be white and predominantly male, and we need to change those positions. Those are the things that we need to influence, and not just the male and female, but also black representation. The difficulty I find within organisations is that if there isn't any black presence or black seniority, you don't know who to go to or where to go to feel safe. If you've got headships, that are setting examples in positions of power that are black or have black representation. It fosters this environment of feeling comfortable and safe. And for me, doing the Black to Front episode where everyone around me was black gave me that sense of, oh my goodness, this is, this is how it could be. And I don't mean that everybody needs to be black, but just having more of a percentage of that so that it's equal, so that you feel rather than being in the minority, you are, you're just another one, if that makes sense, rather than being the only one. As a teen, I analysed absolutely everything about myself, how I looked, my weight, how I spoke, did I fit in? You know, there were so many um, things that held me back. I would just say, don't be so hard on yourself, give yourself a break. And that would probably be the advice I'd still give myself today. <laughs>